In this video, we will be practicing the algebraic technique of completing the square. This is part one in the video series. So, completing the square. Our ultimate goal for this video is to be able to change the equation of a circle into the form x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. Because we would like to ultimately be able to sketch a graph of that circle. So let's build up to this. First, let's start out with a basic example that involves, first of all, only one variable and a coefficient of 1 for the squared term. What we're going to do is we need to create a perfect trinomial, which is a polynomial of three terms that factors into either x plus h quantity squared or x minus h quantity squared. By doing this, it will allow us to be able to read the center of the circle ultimately. So let's start this by taking a look at what exactly is a perfect trinomial and what it looks like when it's factored. So here are three examples of perfect trinomials and what they factor into. In this case, we also have three other perfect trinomials except for the fact that the b value, the value of the coefficient of the middle term, the linear term, is a negative amount. And you can see right here what those factor into. So let's start observing some patterns. If we take a look at the b value, 4 here, and I take a look at what the factored value is in the parentheses, think about what the relationship is between those two numbers, 10 and 5, as well as 16 and 8. If you notice, all of those are half of the b value. We can also examine how those relate to our constant terms. So for example, 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is 25, and 8 squared is 64. Hopefully you'll notice that the third term of each of the trinomials is half of the b value squared. And that what results when we actually go about factoring it you get inside the factored parentheses half of your b value. So let's take a look at an example. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move the constant term over to one side, so I'll subtract 5 from both sides of my equation here. And then when I do that, that leaves me with x squared plus 6, x equals 7. So I need to add a third term on the left to create my trinomial, and I'm going to be adding that same amount on the right side in order to keep the equation balanced. So remember, our ultimate goal is for it to be able to factor into the quantity x plus or minus some number squared. And so if I was to write that as the product of a factor times itself, it would be x either plus a number times x plus the same number, or you're going to have a minus in both of those cases. So the question then becomes, what two numbers in those red boxes will add together to give you the positive 6 coefficient of your middle term, and that will at the same time multiply together to give me the third term. So the two numbers that add together to give me 6 that are the same exact number would be 3 and 3. So let's go ahead and fill that in. So if I was to continue to work backwards, that would multiply out to give me x squared plus 6x plus 9. Therefore, the third term for my perfect trinomial needs to be a 9. I'll go ahead and add that to the left side as well as the right side. Now let's actually go through the process of going forward now that we know what that third term is. So once I have my plus 9, I can factor it into x plus 3 times x plus 3 is equal to 16, which is x plus 3 quantity squared is equal to 16. So let's recap. In order to form my perfect trinomial, I'll take half of my linear term, otherwise known as the b value, so 6 over 2, and then I'll go ahead and I'll square that. So in other words, I get 3 squared, which forms 9, the missing number for my perfect trinomial. And I'll make sure to add 9 to both sides of my equation. In general, as you can see here, if you have x squared plus bx, your third term would be half of the b value quantity squared. When you factor it, you get half of the b value as your second term within your parentheses there. And depending on whether your b value is negative 
or positive, that will determine whether or not the sign within the parentheses will be negative or positive. Now let's do some practice. After writing the following two problems down, pause the video and work through them in completing the square. When you're finished, you can restart the video again and you'll take a look at the solution. The first step in both of these example practice problems is that you get your constant term over to one side. If you notice, your b value in the first example was positive 8, so to find your third term you'd take half of 8, you'd square it, and you'd get 16, making sure then to add 16 to both sides of the equation. In your second example here, the b value is negative 12, so if I take that value, divide it by 2 and square it, I'll get positive 36. You'll notice here that I was a little sloppy and I didn't actually write negative 12 divided by 2. In this case it doesn't really matter because of the fact that when you square it, it'll make it positive anyway. But to be technically precise, you should really be saying negative 12 over 2 quantity squared. The final steps here in both of those problems would be to actually then go ahead and factor it. So let's get back to our original question here, was being able to change the form of a circle into an equation where we can read the center of it. So here's an example in which there's a both an x squared and a y squared. So once again, I'll get the constant term over to the right hand side, and then after that, what I'll do is I'll separate the x's and group them together and separate the y's and group them together. And in this case, I'll just be creating two perfect trinomials. As you can see in red, I'll be creating one trinomial, perfect trinomial for the x's and one perfect trinomial for the y's, and the third term is located in blue for the y value. If you see that I've added both a red and a blue to both sides of our equation, just to remind me that I need to make sure to put something there. So once again, I take half of my b values and I square them and then I make sure to add that to the right hand side of my equation. Upon doing that, I can then factor each of the separate trinomials, so I get x minus 4 quantity squared, and I get y minus 6 quantity squared, add them together, and then I get 53 on the right hand side. Now once again, let's practice this. So pause the video and try this practice problem. You'll be writing your solution in your packet that you will be bringing to class. Ah, you were expecting a solution to be posted? Sorry about that. In our follow-up class, I'll be verifying the work that you've done for both of the practice problems as well as any notes you've taken within our class section notes. Hey, wait! What if my coefficients for x and y aren't 1? Great question. In one of our follow-up videos, we will complete the square when our x and y terms have a coefficient other than 1, and we'll see how helpful completing the square is in understanding conic behavior.